I was just trying to zoom in. Okay, out. now it's on. Yeah. Okay, so I need to do that all over again. No, oh, that got recorded. I paused it for one second to zoom out. The stuff you said before got recorded. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, are, you, are you sure you want... I'll give you bonus points if you'll record. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do. Okay, yeah, all right. Thank you. Yeah, because I, I had somebody one time, and I said 15 minutes, and she stopped it every 15 seconds. I could have killed her. I really <laughs> could have killed her. But um, these are the announcements. They're the same for everybody. I went in, and I was just playing, uh, making sure that everything was, was updated. So I think everything is about right. Let's start with the terms first. And let's make sure that we get these, because I know that your time is valuable, and, um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and start running through these, and y'all can help me, I'm thinking. But have y'all got any questions about anything from Chapter 1, any of the Chapter 1 terms? Um, recall. Recall. Does anybody remember, we were talking about direct democracy, and I'll go ahead and I'll give you this one. Direct democracy, if you remember, was... Uh, well, representative democracy is we elect people to represent us in the government. Well, direct democracy is that we, the people, are basically going to do it ourselves. And I had given you three examples. One of them was referendum. One of them was recall. And those are the two that I'm... And the other one was initiative that was up there. Does anybody remember what a recall was? Go ahead, Martha. So you remember, like, in a public, or like, an office, like, someone in office? Yeah, you can. You can remove somebody in office. Does anybody know how that works? By popular vote, yeah, but there's a process, right? I mean, it's not just a regular election, is it? Uh, a lot of ballot and petition. There is. There is a petition. And what do you have to do in order to, 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 to get this special? Go ahead, Ed. I think you get more than 3% of the population. Signatures. You've got to get signatures of registered voters, right? So you're going to write up something that says, I want to recall Governor Marthen from office. It's not that he's done anything illegal, but he's not doing a good job. And then you're going to go out and you're going to collect registered voters. And it's usually 3%, 5% of the registered voters. Who do you turn it into? Anybody. Who's got to verify the signatures? State Board of Elections. State Board of Elections. And then when they verify these signatures, there is a special election. And there's two questions on the ballot. Y'all remember what the two questions were? Oh, it's going to be an ass kicking on Wednesday. <laughs> two questions on the recall ballot. Number one, do you want to recall or remove Governor Marthen? And then if you say no, you're done. And then if you say yes, what's the second question? Who would you like? To replace him. Can you give me an example of one of the elections that we talked about? California. California. Explain California to me, anybody. Go ahead, Ken. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger actually won the recall after they removed Gray Davis. Do you remember any of the other people that, that were actually on that ballot? What's the yeah. <laughs> there were strippers, there were porn stars, there was somebody named Michael Jackson, but I don't think it was that Michael Jackson. There was somebody named Richard Simmons, but I don't think it was that Richard Simmons. Gary Coleman. And, and how do you get on the ballot? Signatures. Signatures. You get the signatures from the registered voters, you get it registered, or you get it recognized, the State Board of Election will verify it, and then you get put on there. And see, the beauty of this is, you, as the regular person, you drafted the petition, you collected the signatures, there is a special election, and then we the people voted to remove and replace, or we voted not to. In other words, it's all us. It's not politicians. That's why it's direct democracy. Do um, you remember anything about referendum or initiative? Oh, boy, this is going to be bad. An initiative. If you want to get a law passed, how can you do it? You like put up a petition in front of the uh, government and then get um, that to, uh, to get to the Congress. And then get to okay, you can go meet with somebody that's actually an elected official. How can you do it on your own if that elected official doesn't want to help you? So go ahead, Pastor. To pass a law, right? To pass a law. Yeah, we talked about that. They don't want to help you. So how can you do it on your own if you're talking about it at the state level? Through petition. Okay, through a petition. How does that work? Go ahead, Juan. Signatures. You're going to draft your bill and you're going to collect signatures of whom again? Uh, 
registered voters, and then it's going to go to the Board of Elections. And when you can verify that you've got the right number of signatures, then in fact, at that point, it will be on the next ballot, yes or no. And then at that point, if a majority votes yes, it's law. If a majority votes no, it's not. So that's what we're looking at on this. Um, I don't think I'm going to test you on referendum, but initiative and recall are probably a good place to start. Any other questions from Chapter 1? Buffer zone. Yeah. Buffer zone. What was the buffer zone? It was the abortion thing. What do y'all remember? Go ahead, Lynn. It was Massachusetts, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, so two people in this abortion clinic got, got killed. Years ago, they did. Yeah, because, I, I don't know, they, did, they just killed them or something. Okay, yeah, they just killed the people in the abortion and, clinic. So, I think Michigan, you said it? Massachusetts. Massachusetts yeah. this law saying that for the abortion clinics, all the abortion clinics, there was, uh, I think, 30 feet? 35. Like, 30 feet buffer zone where anybody who, like, wanted to, like, call um, yeah, this was one of the articles too, and there's part of this that's in the chapter if you decide that you want to take a look at that. But this was the buffer zone article. And just to make sure that we're clear on this, it was a 35-foot buffer zone, and it was in Massachusetts. Years ago, there were some pro-life people that decided that they wanted to basically stand up against abortion. They killed some people in a Massachusetts clinic, and their thought was, if we kill people that are performing the abortions, we may lose two lives, but we'll save more lives that they didn't take away. So Massachusetts is real sensitive about this, but they had created a 35-foot buffer zone. So when people walk into an abortion clinic, at least under this law in Massachusetts, you could not get closer than 35 feet to them as they entered the building. So there was a buffer zone around there. And, and who was this Grandma McCullen? Like peaceful old lady. Go ahead. She, she did her way differently than the other protesters. How did the other protesters typically do it? Do you remember very much about what uh, they did? Yeah, they spat. They spat. Um, they cursed. Yo, cursed. Yeah, Through. Yeah, through baby dolls. They had recordings of children crying. I mean, they did some kind of despicable things, I think is the basic way of saying this. Well, once they, you know, set up this buffer zone, Grandma McCullen, she didn't do those things, right? What, what did she do? She just talked to um, the individual in the combat of voice, but she didn't scream. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about. And, and I think in each class I would kind of come over, and I'm, I don't know if this is really 36 feet away from Gabe. Could Gabe hear me? I'm sure he could. Could I communicate with Gabe? I'm sure I could. But would it be as efficient as if I got this close and I talked in a nice, soothing voice? Well, Grandma McCullen was saying, I'm being, my free speech is being violated because I would be much more effective, closer, talking to someone in a nice, soothing manner, offering ideas versus standing 36 feet, 35 feet away, yelling things out. Do you remember what the court said about all this? Is it legal or not? Was the buffer zone legal or did Grandma McCullen win? Grandma McCullen won. Grandma McCullen won. They struck down the buffer zone. And their argument on this, they really had two. One of them was, was that, you know, if you're worried about violence and things like this, there are already laws that deal with this that don't have to have anything to do with the First Amendment. That's the first thing. But the second thing was, was in fact this was infringing on her freedom of speech rights. Now, do you remember uh, the problem with allowing Grandma McCullen to be able to break that buffer zone? Everybody could, which means the people that are spitting and cussing and telling you you're going to hell are going to be able to do this as well. Do you remember why the Supreme Court caught a little bit of grief about this? Go ahead, Gabe. Um, there's, a buffer zone around the Supreme. there's a buffer zone around the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court actually is like, we're going to strike down this buffer zone around the abortion clinic, but there's still a buffer zone that you cannot protest around the Supreme Court, it sure does seem a little bit, maybe even a lot, hypocritical. This article is posted. Take a look at it. And, and the second one down here kind of deals with this as well. That buffer zone around the Supreme Court is actually 250 feet. So you've got one that kind of explains the case and one that kind of explains the ruling. Any other terms from Chapter 1 that you can think of? 
What was the social contract? Proposed by John Goss. Go ahead. Uh, um, the government, the people give up some um, rights of the government, but the government can't give them the natural right of life, liberty, and property. Yeah, John Locke basically said in the social contract, we don't want to be in a state of wild. But John Locke said effectively that we as people are willing to give up certain rights to the government in order to gain certain protections. And those terms that seem to keep coming back are life, liberty, property, these kinds of things. And um, in, in, in reality, if you think about it, this social contract became kind of the beginnings of the Declaration of Independence. You could maybe argue that John Locke, who's up there as well, was the person that maybe wrote the Declaration as much as Thomas Jefferson did. And I, I gave you some, some, uh, some quotes from the chapters about that. Anything else that jumps out? Say what? Referendum. Referendum. Don't worry about referendum. Oh, okay. Any others? Order. There were three terms, and I think I had gotten to this in all the classes, where I had asked y'all what you valued most, freedom, order, or equality. And if you remember, freedom was the ability to do what you wanted to do. Order was the idea that you wanted to feel safe and protected. And equality was the idea that everybody should be treated the same. And if you remember, what I had said is that these three things sound like they're kind of on the same team, but in fact, too much of one ends up detracting from others. Now, I'll use you as an example, Kim. If you remember what I said, freedom is like being able to swing your fists. And the problem is, is that if everybody's running around swinging their fists, sooner or later, people are going to start hitting other folks. And then ultimately, nobody is going to have any freedom. You need order, because if there's too much freedom, there's no order. Um, equality is the idea that everybody should be treated the same by government. And these might be a multiple choice question. I wouldn't say that there'd be very much there. Any others from anything with chapter one? Do you remember what the presidential elections were? Because I went through this very early in the semester. It was something about popular vote. What were those elections talking about popular vote? The Electoral College had the final decision. I had given you the elections of 1992, 1996, and 2000. Do you remember what was interesting about all three of those? And I had given this to you in the context of majority rules. Luca, go ahead. The president who won the popular vote didn't actually win the presidency. Well, the president that won the popular vote did win the presidency in 92 and 96. But there was something else about 92, 96, and 2000. No, these weren't even, this was George W. and Bill Clinton's elections. This was talking about, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, I don't remember talking about that. Yeah, let's not even put that in the video. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, it was, I had used the term majority rules and I had a question mark. And if you remember, uh, the idea behind majority rules is that if you get the most votes, then in fact you should win. And what I had said was that in 2000, Al Gore got more votes, but W won the Electoral College. He became president. But if you went back to 96 and 92, Bill Clinton never got a majority. So in all three of those elections, a majority of the American people voted against the man that became president. And in fact, in 2016, a majority of the American people voted against the man Trump who became president again. So this is happening a little more and a little more. Anything with chapter two jumping out? Uh, can you go into chapter one for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Why is politics in there? Would it be like a multiple choice or a definition? Yeah, politics, politicians, political science, they'd be pretty much straightforward multiple choice questions. Yeah, straightforward multiple choice questions. Anything else in chapter two? Go ahead, Katerine. Chapter one. Chapter one. It is, yes. And I think what we said on both of those just a few minutes ago is probably good. No. Yeah, it's not going to be a big thing. Not going to be a big thing. Anything else for, oh, chat, go ahead. Uh, is a delete and playlist area If it is, it's going to be on the take home part. Yeah, it's going to be on the take home, but not on the in class. Any others that you got? Go ahead, Jack. Can you do the uh, Virginia plan? What was the difference between the Virginia, the New Jersey, and the Connecticut 
or the Virginia, the New Jersey, the Connecticut compromise, the Great Compromise. Go ahead, Melina. Uh, 